I'm Carl Zemlin, creator of the Zemlin Photo Bayonet Mount Lens Hoods for Super Telephoto Lenses. Today, I'm doing an unboxing and installation video so you'll know what to expect when you receive your new lens hood. After the install, I'll also show you how I install the rubber grip ring into the lock ring. So if yours comes loose for whatever reason, you can see what works for me to get it set properly in the groove. I live just outside Indianapolis, Indiana. By day, I'm a mechanical engineer. The bulk of my career has been in industrial machine design and automation. I got into photography pretty seriously back in 2008, and I think it was 2012 that I shot my first race at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway and got my taste for big glass shooting with the lenses owned by the Speedway. A few years ago, I picked up a Nikon 400mm f2.8 VR lens. And while walking around with the lens over my shoulder, I've had the factory hood fall off a few times. The hood on my copy is in very good condition, and I want to keep it that way, so it's still nice when I go to sell the lens whenever that sad day may come. And I'm not keen on spending five to six hundred dollars for a replacement. There's also a number of hoods that have been discontinued by Canon and Nikon, so for folks who own those lenses, it makes getting a replacement hood that much tougher. I've been 3D printing stuff for a number of years, so I've had the idea of making a replacement lens hood rolling around in my head for a little while. At the start of the COVID shutdown this year, I had some time on my hands, and I had also discovered this fiberglass reinforced ABS material for 3D printing. This is amazing material. It's far more rigid and stronger than anything else I've ever worked with. It seemed like the perfect material for a lens hood. I also tested a carbon fiber reinforced material, but the glass outperforms the carbon in several ways, and there wasn't a measurable weight difference. My hoods are not as rigid or strong as the carbon fiber tubes that Nikon uses. In a crush test, the Nikon hood would win. But the weakness of these hoods, and the same with Canon, is the little clampy bits. All the tiny screws holding things together, and the, the aluminum ring with very thin sections, the tiny little screws holding the clamp knob together. I don't think I've ever rented a big lens that had a properly functioning, fully intact lens hood. Screws missing, missing or loose clamp knobs, bent lock rings, egg-shaped rings that can't be properly tightened, whatever. So my goal was to just get rid of all of that. I have done crush tests on a few of my hoods, and those that I've tested have all gone well over 100 pounds of force before breaking. And until they break, they bounce right back and mount up without issue. So let's open up the box and see what a Zemlin Photo Lens Hood is all about. These are not factory produced parts. They're not imported from China. They are made to order right here in my garage. The filament I use is also manufactured in the US, which is unusual for 3D print material. So here's the box. Most of my hoods ship in this 8-inch cube. There are a couple of longer one-piece hoods that come in a 12-inch box. I use a bit of crumpled paper in the box to keep things from rattling around. It might be a grocery bag or a piece of newsprint whatever I have that I can reuse. All the goodies are packed together in a plastic bag. I provide everything you'll need to get the hood installed along with printed instructions. The hood, be it a one-piece or two-piece hood, is partially assembled. You'll need to rotate the bits to separate them. Nothing is locked, so they'll turn freely until you can pull them apart. If you rotate it one way, there's nothing. Rotate it, rotate it the other way, and it will pull right apart. The skinny bit is the lock ring that mounts on the lens. Inside the lock ring, you'll find a shipping ring. It's there to make sure that the rubber grip ring stays in place during shipping. You'll see a reddish silicone rubber ring that serves several purposes in the design. It's lightly pressed into the groove inside the lock ring and it can come loose or fall out if not handled carefully. 
I'm not going to address this right now, but if you do need help getting the grip ring installed back into the groove, stick around until the end of the video. Along with the hood and the instruction sheet, you'll find a little plastic bag. Inside the bag is my business card with contact information if you ever need to reach me for whatever reason. A one and a half millimeter ball end hex key that you'll need for the locking screw and an alcohol wipe to make sure that the lens and the lock ring are clean for maximum grip. So it's time to start the install. Handling these lenses can be cumbersome, so I find it best to have the lens mounted on a tripod for the installation. The orientation or the position of the lock ring for most lenses doesn't matter. My personal preference is to put the clamp screw at the bottom. So to make this easy for installation, I rotate the lens and the tripod collar so it's upside down, and while I'm installing the hood, the lock ring clamp screw will be at the top. I do have a few pedal style hoods, and so if yours is one of those, for proper orientation, the clamp screw will need to be at 6 o'clock on the lens. The first thing we need to do is get the shipping ring out from inside the lock ring. Remember the rubber grip ring in there can come loose, so what I recommend is completely loosening the clamp screw and then spread the lock ring so the shipping ring can simply fall out. With the screw loose, take care while handling it so that the little screw and the flat washers don't fall out. Now, open the alcohol wipe and clean the inside of the lock ring and the hood groove on the lens. If we take a close look at the lock ring, these features here on the outside are the locking features. This opening here is where the cam on the hood drops in and then slides around to lock here. So this face is the front of the lens. The rubber grip ring is toward the back of the lock ring. So spread the lock ring out and pop it over the front of the lens. Make sure the ridge at the back of the lock ring seats in the hood groove on the lens. Once you orient it where you want it, I'm going to put mine at 12 o'clock, which because the lens is upside down it will be in the bottom for normal uh, landscape mode. The long leg of the 1.5 millimeter wrench is a ball end. This end is easier for initial tightening of the screw, but it can slip in the screw head if you crank too hard on it. So only use the ball end until the lock ring begins to clamp down on the lens. Move it just a little bit here. So then, when it starts to tighten down on the lens, switch to the short leg of the wrench and finish tightening. As I mentioned earlier, there should be a one or a, a two millimeter gap in the lock ring when it is fully tightened and you can use the wrench to check for that. It should spin freely but not have any significant play. So continue to tighten the screw using the short end of the wrench until you have almost zero clearance on the wrench but it can still spin freely. Oh, that's a little bit much, I'm going to back it off maybe half a turn. 
there we go. Once the screw is tight, that's it, and you're ready to go shooting. Put the hood over the lock ring and rotate it until the cams drop into the groove. Continue to rotate it around until it stops and then crank a little harder and it will snap and lock on the lens. Unlocking takes a little more torque as I want the hood to be secure when it's installed for shooting. If you have a two-piece hood, pop the first section on and lock it. Then install the outer section. Be sure to check out my video with tips on handling a two-piece hood. Hoods can be reversed for storage. So that's it for the hood install. As mentioned earlier, I'm going to show you how to fix the rubber grip ring if it comes loose or falls out of the groove in the lock ring. The groove in the lock ring is tapered so it's tighter fit on the rubber when the rubber is fully pressed into the groove. The rubber is square so orientation doesn't matter. There isn't an inside, outside, or top face. Start with the end of the rubber at the end of the groove and with one hand just lay the rubber down into the groove with the end about at the end of the groove and with the other hand just press it in and you might feel a light snap as the rubber gets fully seated in the groove and so just with the one hand holding the rubber down in the groove and the other hand pressing it in fully seating it in the groove and that's that's all there is to it as you work your way around just make sure you're not twisting the rubber and you just want it set, settled in the groove as you're pressing it in. And when you get to the end, you may have a bit of a gap or a little extra material. Don't worry about a gap. It's not that critical. And if you have a little extra, just snip it off. With that, the ring is ready to install back on the lens. I suggest wiping it out with alcohol just as you did on the in initial installation to make sure there are no skin oils on the surface which might reduce the amount of grip with the lens. I have had the grip ring stick slightly to a lens when removing a lock ring that's been installed for a while. So if you have reason to remove the ring, you may need to know this trick before putting it back on the lens. I hope you found this video helpful. Feel free to leave questions or comments below. And now, get out there and grab some awesome images. Thanks.